Hello and welcome to our fourth segment on the Apostles' Creed. If you have not seen the first three, go back and review those. Uh, we've gone over quite a bit the context, the history of the Apostles' Creed. We've talked about God as Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit, that God is three and, and one. Uh, we've talked about the Father Almighty, that God is totally other and yet He is close and personal with all of creation, that He cares for all of creation. Uh, now we're going to get into the last part on the Father, which is creator of heaven and earth. The Apostles' Creed mentions this as the closing part uh, on the Father. It's very important. The first verse of the Bible, the first chapter in verse of the Bible, starts off with, In the beginning God created, or uh, Bereshit bara Elohim. These are three, these are four, technically, important words in the Hebrew language that God describes himself by uh, at the beginning of our scriptures. So again, this is a, a very pivotal aspect of who God is. He is creator and he creates all that we uh, know and experience today. So the first chapter in verse of the Bible, Genesis 1-1, the first thing God wants, us to, wants to reveal of himself is that he is creator. That uh, the, the text starts off as Bereshit bara Elohim. That's God created, or in the beginning, God created. And then it's the heavens and the earth. So first note that God's the subject, again, of the verb, uh, as we went over in the previous lessons. That God's the one that does the action. Now this, he is creating uh, the heavens and the earth. The object of his creation is all that we see. And so the very first thing God's, God's really making clear, yet it's often overlooked, is that there's a distinction between the Creator and His creation. That God is the designer, and this is His masterpiece. We might think of cre the Creator in terms of the art and the, uh, um, or the artist and the art. Well, the same thing with God is that He's the one that brought all this about for His glory. And so we know that life is intended, it's a perp it's, it's, it has a purpose, it's heading somewhere, it has a source, that's God, and it has an end, that's ultimately the new heavens and new earth, the recreation of all things through Jesus Christ. This is an important fact that God's creator and he is separate from creation. A lot of world religions and um, modern spiritualism, uh, pantheism, panentheism, all various uh, beliefs, this is where they uh, go wrong from Scripture, is that they confuse the Creator with creation. They fuse the two together and essentially God becomes the tree. He becomes uh, your desk, your computer, and, and essentially deifies us. We're a part of creation and therefore we're part of God and God is me and God is in everything. Uh, yet Scripture is clear that first there was God, there is God, and that He created finite temporal uh, uh, this this place we call the heavens and the earth. Uh, so that's a really key distinction and point to make that that is part of the Christian fundamentals. Um, creator creation distinction. The the other point that we see in Genesis chapter one is that God calls things into existence and names them. Uh, again, this shows that God has purpose and intention for things. He's designed things to function and be a certain way. Like us as His image bearers, He's created us to reflect Him, His, His, His glory by the way we live, uh, loving God, loving Him and loving others, to live righteously according to our gifts and talents that He has given us, to rule and subdue the earth, uh, again, according to His likeness. And so everything has purpose because of God, and this is a glorious tr uh, truth that uh, the church and Christians, we, we uh, celebrate that life has purpose. Uh, the other point in Genesis that's really clear about God as creator is that He creates good things. He does not create bad things. He doesn't create evil things. Evil came as a result of the fall uh, of sin and judgment. And so uh, things are good. Everything He makes is good. And Genesis 1.31 says that God saw all that He had made and behold, it was exceedingly good. Tov. Uh, and, and this is a really important point to make is that creation is not evil. Uh, uh, fallenness came through the fall. Sin entered and death entered and corrupted things. But God as Creator created all things good. It was exceedingly good. Uh, this is where uh, People, people can come up with poor methods to life as though you need to escape the world and, and to try to run from it. Rather, Christianity says we need to run to it and to redeem it, to invite it uh, uh, into our lives, to, to go after creation and restore it and rule over it the way God intended us to. So creation is not evil. Uh, matter is not evil. Uh, our hearts are wicked and evil and need restoration through the work of Jesus. Uh, this is a key point 
of God as creator. So in application, we're going to just look at how we can apply this to our lives in terms of our faith, our belief, uh, rather than practical ways. I guess the practical way would be to get our thinking in accord with God's word when it comes to the Father as creator of heaven and earth. And the first thing, we, as we noted, is that God intended all things. He purposed all things. Our lives are not accidental. Uh, this, this, this world is not due to happenstance, but the reason why we see beauty and order and intelligence throughout, through and through all things is because there's a beautiful, intelligent, all-knowing, all-wise God behind it all. Uh, secondly, that creation is separate from the Creator. The Creator is distinct from the creation. That God is timeless, immaterial uh, being, and we are time confi confined by time and material. We're His creation. And so we do not confuse the two. The Scripture does not confuse the two. In the beginning was God, and He created then the heavens and the earth. Uh, another point that we need to get into our hearts and minds is that creation is good. Uh, creation is not evil. Uh, things are not things to be escaped from and to transcend, but things to enter into, to invite into our lives, to restore by the power of the gospel. That, that uh, uh, one practical application out of that is, what am I doing today to restore and reshape this world into the, to the good that God intends it to be? Um, that how might we better glorify God in our lives today, restoring creation. In closing, uh, one psalm to uh, memorize that goes along with this topic of God as creator is Psalm 19.1. that says that the heavens declare the glory of God in the sky or the, the firmament proclaim his handiwork. Again, that there's intelligence in all things and it really uh, is indicative of an intelligible being that created and, and ordained and purposed life like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, let us know your thoughts, comments. We hope to see you again on the next segment. That would be the sixth one. And in the meantime, blessings.